This is Twit. I, you probably know I play this silly game called Pokemon Go. You probably know I'm playing this game all the time, right? Oh, wait a minute. I just got a buzz. Not only is there an ISS above, but there is a little Pokemon out there. One of the reasons... Oh, can't be found there. Oh, whoa, ho, 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 hold on there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is it There's the an, ISS? It's an execute. Oh. Let me just catch that. So the, the whole idea of this game is great. In fact, people say, well, it's just, you know, it's a dumb game, but you don't play it sitting in your on your duff. You have to go out there, unless you're doing it like I am at work. You have to go out there, walk around, try to find... Pokemon to catch. Look, this is a map, right? This is our actual area. That's the street we're on. You'll see there's also Poke Stops. These are the little, uh, th like, that's the restaurant behind us, Cafe Jostra. If I'm close enough, I can spin it and get some prizes. There's also gyms that you can fight in. This is uh, Butter and Eggs Parade headquarters. You can see there's six Pokemon in there. It's, that's a full gym. If I get a little closer to it, I can take my pokemon and fight against their pokemon maybe even take over the gym get points it's a fun game that gets you out gets you walking it, i just saw a statistic that uh on the first few months of pokemon go first six months of pokemon go people walked an extra billion miles you know uh all over the world because this game was so hot now that was two years ago that was july 2016 but people are still playing in fact the game has been there's been so many great additions to pokemon go that I think people are, are back at it. Lisa and I, who embarrassingly both play it and spend a lot of time, even when we were in Europe, playing it. A lot of great European Pokemon. Uh, yesterday we were walking. We, it gives us an excuse to take walks. So we take walks and we play Pokemon Go. And, you know, it's fun. It's nice. It's, it's togetherness. Uh, I'm walking along and a kid, you're, maybe your son's age, 14-year-old, says, you're playing Pokemon. I said, yeah. I said, come with me. We're going to raid the Mason's Clock. I said, Lisa, I got somebody to help us in the raid. And the three of us, Cruelty and I and Lisa, raided the clock. We got our special Pokemon. It was great fun. We became friends. We're going to exchange presents. It's awesome. It's a, it's a, you meet people, you have fun, and you get exercise. That's the kind of game I like. But if you really start getting deep into the game, and you're not somebody like Kevin who grew up, on the Pokemon TV show. You maybe don't know all the Pokey lore. You need some help. For instance, you know, I've got 114 some, 126 Pokemon in my collection, but I don't know what's good, what's bad, what I should be fighting with, who I should be fighting with it, all of that stuff when you get to the gyms. So that's why I have, and this was a Rene Ritchie recommendation. He's the king of Pokemon in my, in my life. Pokey Genie. Now, it's a free program, ad-supported, but if, if you kick in a couple of bucks, I think $2.99, you can get rid of the ads and get some extra features. And what this will do, in fact, let me, let me, uh, let me show you what it'll do. It's actually very clever. Uh, I'm going to look at my uh, Pokemon. That's a lot of Pokemon. Oh, I've been collecting for years. <laughs> actually, we stopped playing for a while um, and, and uh, just started again. I think I got, let me just see real quickly if I got one back recently. No, I didn't because I... I've categorized all my Pokemon, but just let's pretend I haven't. So let's say I got a Pokemon here. Look at that. that that's an electrode, okay? And I want to I want to know more about what that electrode can do. There are ways you can find out. There's little things here you can read. It's it's combat points and all this stuff. You can also get an appraisal. This is something they added fairly recently, where uh, your team leader will come on and say, "Let's take a look. Overall, your electrode amazes me." Its hit points are the strongest feature, but I'm blown away by its stats. Wow. Your electrode is gigantic, the largest I've ever seen. Wow, all of that stuff's great news, right? So I'm going to keep this electrode. Maybe I'll even power it up, and sometimes you can evolve them. And So I'm going to put some investment into this thing. So the way you, you save it is you take a screenshot. Remember, that's volume up and power on. That's going to take the screenshot there, and I'll slide that out of the way. Because I'm going to now, I'm going to go into this program pokey genie now watch at the bottom of the screen it's reading it saw oh you have a new screenshot and here's a nice feature by the way you have to pay for these you can delete old screenshots because uh -huh. otherwise your camera roll your photos get filled with <laughs> screenshots of your pokemon i'm going to then sort it in scan date and this is the new one okay now i can know some more about this one i can put in the appraisal and i can get some more information about its attack capabilities, its defensive capabilities. I can even, in the Android version, rename it. 
uh, with that information so that when I get when it gets time, I can favorite them with stars. I can even have this little calculator to simulate power up and evolution. How many? How much power, more powerful is it going to get as I add power to it? Is it worth it? Is that going to is that going to be worth the cost of one hundred twenty eight thousand seven hundred dust points? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. You have to decide. It makes the game, I have to say, a little more nerdy, but a little more fun. And uh, and 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 people are often sharing screenshots from this program. Because it's the only way you can really see what they call the IV points, the in individual value points of attack, defense. You can also do simulated gym battles to see, well, if how am I doing? If I attack gyms, is this a good one? If I defend gyms, is this a good one? It's really, uh, they, it's a very useful program for people who want to get extraordinarily nerdy with Pokemon Go. So it's sort of like project management software for your Pokemon yeah, Go. Yeah, because the more you put into the Pokemon, let's say I say, hey, Kevin, there's a Mewtwo raid right next door. So do I have what I need to take it over? So I could put in what the Mewtwo is, what its combat points are, how many, how many things I'm going to throw against it, what kind of strategy I might use, see which ones are the best against them, finding top counters. For the Mewtwo. So I should go into battle with my Gyarados, my Houndoom, my Executor, my Crobat, my Muck, and my Venusaur. Right on. I've got a team, baby. Can it I says remember? you couldn't do this on your own, though. Uh, <laughs> Not a million years. <laughs> Lots of fun. If you are a Pokemon Go player, and I do recommend it. You know, uh, a lot of kids play with their families, believe it or not, their parents. It's a great one to play with your kids. It's a great way to bond over this, especially if you've got kids in their early teens. Um, but I see people all over Petaluma still playing this game. It's not quite the craze it was in July 2016, where it was insane. Mm -hmm. It was insane. But if people are still playing it. And it's really important, if you're going to play it, you got to wear your fluorescent orange Pokemon mm -hmm. Go hat mm -hmm. so nobody attacks you. And maybe don't listen to any adult male that asks you to come into a small space with him. Um, no, no, like it was outdoors. I mean, it's Leo, it's fine. It was outdoors. No, the kid was actually, was, I was really impressed. The kid was really like, okay. <laughs> Stranger danger. Stranger danger. But you know, when we were in Malta, did I tell you this? No. Uh, Malta is a tiny island in the middle of the Mediterranean. Beautiful place. I really like it. And they speak a weird language, ostensibly. They supposedly speak English because it was an English colony for years. No. Supposedly, because it's so near Italy, they speak Italian. No. They speak a weird Italianized version of Arabic, of all things. And it's unintelligible. We're standing outside the most beautiful cathedral, St. John's Co-Cathedral in, uh, in Valletta, Malta. And because Lisa and I are nerds playing Pokemon Go. And you can always tell, it's a distinctive move. When people are playing Pokemon Go, they're doing this. If you see somebody doing this, Swiping up. But that's what I do. That's what I look like when I'm on Instagram. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah, that's the problem. It looks a little like Instagram. But you can kind of tell them. Maybe look over their shoulder and see what they're up to. So Lisa and I are standing outside the beautiful St. John's Co Cathedral, which amazingly enough is also a Pokemon gym. Hmm. And we're battling. And two guys come up to us. Two, two, two uh, young adults in their 20s come up to us. And they don't speak English. They speak this uh, Maltese. And uh, so they go... Zapdos. Now, I speak Pokemon. And in Pokemon, Zapdos is a great boss. Everybody wants a Zapdos. So we understand that what they're saying is, follow us to the Zapdos. So Lisa and I follow these two strange guys down the alleyways of <laughs> Valletta Malda. Now, I don't recommend this behavior. There's a Zapdos. I don't recommend this behavior. But it turned out fine because we got okay. to, a couple of blocks away, the gym Another guy joined us, there was five of us, and we all raided the Zapdos. It was a way, a cross-cultural bonding. The international language of Pokemon. Exactly. Zapdos. I wish I'd taken a picture. I don't know why I didn't think to take a picture of it. It would have been really fun to have. But, hey, you know who you are. Zapdos. <laughs>